All right, Richie, this was a fun one. Let's talk a little bit about this Miami Florida State basketball game yesterday. Let me just be very brutally honest because I know you're going to dominate this segment. I was not looking forward to this at all. I didn't even watch this game. I had the TCU baseball game on while this was on. The Florida State TCU baseball. We went swimming outside. I was grilling hamburgers. I walked back into my phone and see a text from Mike in our group chat. It said that basketball won. I thought he was being silly. I was like, oh, the ladies play again today? Or what, what is going on here? Florida State on a last second shot from Matthew Cleveland breaks number 13 Miami's hearts. And we don't do a ton of basketball. We started this new channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button on this DFNS Knoll Sports channel. But we will always talk about anytime Florida State beats a rival, especially in a heartbreaking fashion like they did to Miami. Florida State, honestly, one of their worst teams in 25 years, may set a record for most losses. And this is probably Miami's best team that they've had in uh, since laranega has been there, certainly, right? Maybe since Ham was back there. So Florida State finds a way to win a Matthew Cleveland heave from way downtown as the clock expires. You had John Ruiz putting up the pouty face after the game, hoping that it would get waved off. You had Uncle Luke down there recording the whole thing, recording Caleb Mills and the boys, throwing down the U in front of the student section. How much of this game did you watch? And did you see it happen live? Like, were you napping? Or what, what, what went on here? So uh, I was watching it to start the game, right? And uh, of course Miami gets out like 14 to 2. Because why not? Because that's what all this team does all year. And, uh, you know, you get to the halftime, you're down by 23. I, caught, I started flipping the channel, and then I'm just keeping an eye on my phone. And I'm like, oh, this game is getting kind of close. So let me get back to it. And, man, am I glad I saw that. But, yeah, it was just... What we've seen so many times this year from this team where they get down big and you just expect them to roll over because that's what they've done all year. I sat in the, um, I don't even remember, Spectrum Arena, I think it is, at UCF oh. and just watched UCF beat the brakes off of us. And just looking around, having UCF fans talk smack to me in basketball, I, I didn't know how to react. I didn't know what was going on. But that's all this team has done all year when they get down. They say, okay, whatever. You know, the few times they have made a, a comeback at, when they have trailed big, they've come up short, right? So it's one of those things. I think it was 70 to 69 when they got the first lead off of Caleb Mills layup. And then it was back and forth uh, there from the end. But shout out to the trio of Darren Green, Caleb Mills, and Matthew Cleveland. Those guys really, really sparked that run. I think they scored the vast majority of the points in the second half. And Florida State did something that you'd like to see. 34 of their 54 points came in the paint. They got to the rim. You know, they made it look easy at times. The announcers even said, you know, that's too easy. Um, you know, but sometimes these are college kids, right? You get a big lead. It's not uncommon to get a little complacent and, and, you know, a team fights their way back. That's not something we've seen from Florida State all year. And, of course, when Miller hits that corner uh, three with just a few seconds left, uh, I'm like, of course that had to happen. It was and shades how, of Clemson. It was shades how, of the game yeah. that I was at against Clemson. And how is he that open right there in the corner where he can just get a wide open look. He was able to take his time, get set and get a shot. And he had been making those all day long. So that was a problem. And then you're out of timeouts because you had to burn them all during the comeback. So Caleb Mills or not Caleb Mills, Matthew Cleveland inbounds the ball to Jalen Worley and shout out Worley for, you know, holding on just long enough to where Cleveland could get some space before getting it over to Cleveland. It was, you know, it wasn't quite Luke Laux hitting Michael Snare at Cameron Indoor. But it was good find, you know, and you saw even Caleb Mills was over calling for the ball. He wanted the shot too, which I thought was encouraging because I didn't think there was a player on this team who would want to take a shot like that based on how the season has gone. And good for this team to go through the season they had. You mentioned that they are going, unless they win the ACC and become the most unlikely national champions of college history, they're going to at least tie the record for most losses in program history. I think this probably is the worst team in program history, to be honest. But... A day like that, that's why we love sports. That's why I love college basketball, because out of nowhere, you can t knock off number 13 Miami, who had been 15-0 and at home prior to yesterday. Yeah. I sent this to our group chat the other day. Florida State had less than a 5% chance to win this game, according to ESPN Stats and Info, and I was just like, man, this cannot be the way that this is all ending, or we don't even – Miami in basketball, right? We're, we're, they're not even giving us a chance to compete in this thing. Um, I texted our good buddy Chuck Walsh the other day, or this this morning, and uh, 
Yeah, it is. It, it's a it's a, been a really rough season, and it's been hard to uh, it's been it's been a hard team to cover. It's been a hard team to talk about because you, you just feel like anything you say is just going to be negative, right? They they've not really had any impressive wins. Um, the games where you felt kind of good about them, they blew it late, like the Clemson game and um, other games they've had big comebacks in, but just couldn't get over the hump, or they've just gotten absolutely blown out. And so it's been frustrating. It's been hard to watch. Um, yeah, it feels a little bit like that 20, 2018, 2019, 2020 football seasons where you're just like, man, this thing cannot end fast enough. We cannot get to the offseason fast enough. But a bright moment, right? Like, I, you know, you, you know, it, it, it's, it stinks that that's your bright moment of the year, and, and that's really like the only thing you'll have to celebrate for the season. But much like when Florida State went 5-7 and seven in 2021 – you got to celebrate a soul-crushing win over Miami, and that always puts a smile on people's faces. Um, Richie, I didn't think about this until this morning when the FSU basketball account tweeted it, but a year to the day, minus a day, since his heave against Virginia, where he hit the game-winning shot. Is Matthew Cleveland the most most clutch player since Michael Snare? And <laughs> and who and why? Yes, because there's no other. I don't know. Dwayne Bacon hit some pretty big shots he when did, he was yeah. in Tallahassee, so he, he's definitely up there. But yeah, and, and again, to want the ball in that moment, right? It would have been easy for him to inbound it and then just kind of lay back and say, "All right, let's see what Jalen does, see who he finds." No, he was sprinting because he wanted that shot. And yeah, that, that's clutch, man. That, that Virginia shot that was a crazy one where you just. You know, turned around, falling away at the quarter um, of the three-point line right there. But this one, man, it was so special just to see it all net. Typically, you see one, you know, that shot is missed nine times out of ten, no matter who's taking it, right? Mm -hmm. Everyone's excited. You know, it's one of those shots where, you know, the Vegas sports book is just going nuts because someone had Florida State money line. And they got to enjoy a pretty nice payout based on that one. But yeah, I mean, really clutch. But yeah, Michael Snare, I mean, no one, I don't know of any college basketball player, period, who hit more clutch shots than he did as far as game winners with less than a few seconds or at the buzzer itself. Yeah, no, it, it like I said, a bright spot in a really, really tough year. And uh, couldn't be more happy for those kids because they've, they've been there and they have, I will say, there have been times where this team has looked very disinterested and like they haven't cared. And uh you kind of understand that based on what's going on, but they really haven't stopped fighting. They, I think they've done a good job of continuing to fight, continuing. Yesterday would have been very, very easy to mail it in, right? Yeah. It, it, it would have been very, very easy to say, not our day. There's two games left in the season, North Carolina, Virginia Tech. Let's get done. Let's get out of here. Let's move on. Let's get, let's get to the offseason. And they didn't do that against a rival, against Coach Ham's old team down there in South Florida. Miami had taken over first in the ACC. They were going to be the one seed. Uh, I don't know if that's still the case or if that has switched up or not. We can look real quick while we're talking well, about Carolina it. Carolina beating Virginia certainly helped him out a lot there. because that, that's. I'll be interested to see what happens tomorrow night, TJ, because – I, guys, go to the Tucker Center, please. This team, I know it's not been fun for those of you that have been showing up all season, but they're playing a desperate North Carolina team who just upset Virginia yesterday. Um, so I think that helped out Miami a lot, but still. So Pitt, Pitt needs to win, but Pitt jumped back in front of Miami. So by Florida State winning that game, it moved Miami down to second. The ball's in Pitt's court, not to be cliche. But, uh, you know, if you get to move Miami down to the two seed instead of the one seed, again, Keep them from an ACC regular season championship with one shot. Can't complain about that. Go Pitt. I'm a Pitt fan. These next two games, I need Pitt. I need Pitt to. I need Pitt to win this regular season championship. Yeah, and, and that's huge because I've always said the regular season champ, conference championship in basketball is way more impressive than uh, you know a team getting hot for three days in uh, Atlanta or Greensboro or Charlotte, wherever they're playing any given year. Brooklyn, a few years, but yeah, it's. I remember how happy I was seeing him after they beat Boston College in 2020 on top of that ladder, cutting that net down inside the Tucker Center. That's a huge deal. And if, like you said, Miami ends up second place in the ACC and misses out on winning a ACC regular season championship, all because of Matthew Cleveland and Florida State, it was the largest comeback by any team all season, right? 25 points early in the second half. And I think I read it was the largest comeback in ACC history, yeah. which is very surprising because there's been a lot of... Uh, this conference has been around for a long time in basketball, 
But man, just a, a huge, huge win. It, you'd love it that it, if that shot was just getting you ready for March Madness. Obviously, there will be no postseason for Florida State this year. Like you mentioned, they have two games left and then the ACC tournament. Um, but man, what a sweet, sweet way to beat Miami. You know, it, I'd, I'd almost rather winning that way than it, just having a 10, 12 point lead the whole game and holding on to win by eight to be down by 25 with less than 18 minutes to play and come back and get the win in that fashion. John Ruiz was running his mouth all over Twitter at halftime. Um, <laughs> and then after the, game, after the game, I saw him tweet, oh, uh, Coach L is right. This was this was a great job by Florida State. No, man, you were talking all that crap all game. Um, like you said, Uncle Luke was there. He posted a video of it. It was just amazing. I saw a couple other crowd videos of this shot happening, and there's nothing better like – if I'm a basketball player, maybe this is just how I'm wired. If I'm going to hit a game winner, I'd almost rather it be on the road just because you hear just a pin drop silence and then just the little pocket silence. of your fans going nuts. Uh, yeah. It's like when Snare hit that game winner at Cameron Indoor. It was just amazing because the crowd went from nuts to just very quiet. To see the whole team be able to sprint down the end of the court and celebrate, seeing Cleveland holding down the U right at midcourt after the game, it, it, again, this is a season that I could not forget soon enough, but it's a game that I will remember for a very long time. Yeah. Pitt and Miami play next weekend. Uh, winner of that um, will uh, will win the ACC, I believe. I think if Miami was to lose this one and then lose their midweek game and Pitt was to win, I, you know, there's some snares. Most likely that game is going to be for the uh, – for the ACC championship uh, regular season. Gramco, you can go to thegramco.com right now. If you haven't tried their Delta 8 products, they have a phenomenal deal for you, a great sampler. You can go get their four count of gummies, right? If you use the code TJ25 at checkout or DFNS25 at checkout, either one, whichever one you remember later on, will get you 25% off. It makes that four count a $6 purchase. Go check them out for six bucks. If you don't like it, shoot us a message and I'll personally refund it. Don't be going crazy with that though because I can only refund a couple of those. Go check them out if you haven't tried Delta 8 just yet. Want to get that in your hands. Want you to be able to experience that. Want you to be able to try that. Again, thegramco.com, TJ25. If you have ordered from them in the past and you don't need the sampler, but you have a friend that may need to try it and you don't want to give away any of your stash, make sure that you're getting that or adding that onto your cart when you're checking out or the next time you order so that you can spread the love and share some well. thegramco.com, TJ25 at checkout.